In a world of scammers and shammers, there arose one demigod to wreck them all, making trading great again. Here tonight, and here are the list of things we are going to be covering. We've got the new DCDM strategy alerts. We'll talk about the trade room review and results from today. Uh, it is the beginning of the week there. We've got uh, the Flowmaster Threshold settings. If you uh, have questions around changing that, we've had a few people asking questions around those settings, so we'll talk about that. Quad Witching this week. It is a big week. Don't forget, end of week there, Quad Witching, plus FOMC on Wednesday. Going to be huge. Desktop tips for your large vertical monitors. And speaking of that, wait till the end here. Uh, we've got some examples of the DCDM, Double Cross, Double Move, Continuation versus the reversal so we're going to cover all that here tonight and stay till the end we'll talk about the father's day offer and i'm going to send you guys an awesome gift this week if you join us this week through father's day again that is a big deal to me and we'll talk more about that at the end of the video and i'm going to send you a huge 43 inch monitor let's get into it here tonight roll that tape all right, so it is Monday again. Don't forget to uh, post our optimizations either the night before or the morning of. You make sure that you go and grab this. Um, let's see, why is it all fuzzy? There we go. Um, you need to go and grab the grid and pay attention to the period right here for each of the instruments. Make sure you set this for your wave chart if you're using the Algo Box, if you're doing the two-week free trial, of course, as well as the members. Make sure you check out our chat rules before you get started there. Um, one of the questions DG put in this morning, he was asking about the new Flowmaster Delta flagging that we will talk a lot more about tomorrow in specific detail. We'll go over some of that today on the DCDMs, like I said before. But um, asking about the threshold of eight, look, leave the settings where they're at. Um, I always debate whether or not I should just remove all setting parameters and a lot of systems that are out there, they leave you all these options. So you as the user get, oh, 100% configurability. You can change anything you want. You can do all this. If you want that, look, there's a lot of other places you can go and fiddle, faddle, fiddle, fiddle, faddle all you want, okay? Here I am setting the things that I use and you are trying to emulate me first. If you can emulate me and be successful doing what I do, then, and you want to play later on and go, go for it, okay? But don't spend your time tweaking, changing, all that type of stuff, trying to like, oh, make it even, even better, even better. Listen, um, when you can start beating me, please, by all means, you know, go and take it to the next level. But until then, please leave the settings um, and don't ask me about them. And again, you guys make me regret even allowing the parameters to be in there because again, just because it's there, you know, does not, if, if it's important, I promise I will tell you to change it, okay? I promise and I will make it blatantly clear. All right. Um, that goes for kind of any parameter settings. Okay. Um, L's trading. She said a DCDM to the target that I measured out with the FIB F8 tool. How beautiful is this? All right. Let's take a peek here. Um, DCDM, double cross, double move. I see the FIB measurement there. Um, I think she entered in right here. Those are close enough together again within 10 or 15 ticks of each other. That's fine. Um, did she play that one out all the way? Excellent. I see another one down here. So this is a pretty nice one. You've got the up move to here, you got the sign DCDM that that is going to double. And so you got the move measured from here to here, which gives you target right here. Um, so there's your profit. And on this, this is RTY, four times all your audio sounds, not, uh, not a bad idea. Busy week, yes, folks, we've got FOMC and quad witching at the end of the week. So lots of volatility gonna be coming in toward the end of the week. That means that today and tomorrow might be a little bit slow. Even Wednesday might be a little slow, but Thursday, Friday, are gonna get a lot of pickup um, there. Likely on Wednesday though, is going to be the start of all of the super crazy action. Awesome work there, Nick. Early morning, 82% profitable, 1,300 uh, profit factor, 2.41, 2.4 times the size of his losers for the winners. Excellent work. Um, profit factor 1.26, 50% profitable, 350 bucks for whiskers. Not too bad. One of our new members, not uh, not premium member yet, but um, excellent work, even using the system at its most basic level. And I see double dot, double dot inside of a J hook. Very good, very nice. Love the labels as well. Excellent work. Uh, another another new person with us, that dude. Um, again, you can tell with the members that are in white, just uh, brand new, kicking the tires. Awesome, 250 bucks there, 70% profitable, profit factor 1.5 for 250 there, uh, 10 a.m. Let's see, working on losing well, whiskers, yes. And Casey doubled down on that, said absolutely the most important lesson you can learn. Yes, losing well, folks. Can we focus 40 days on that in our program? Excellent work. You only get the bonus trade if all five were successful. Uh, no, that dude, go watch the videos. Take notes, folks, take notes on the videos and you will know the answers to your questions. It's all you need. Okay, have a great day. Show for my daughters and friends around the rest of the day. Trade well. Nice work, KC. Hitting 2100 there. 1.93 profit factor. Awesome work. And he's on vacation. Excellent work, KC. Uh, thank you, love the current configuration. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for his mistake, he would have been 100%. Okay, 70% profit. 260 bucks there in micros. Profit factor 2.55. Awesome work on minis. That is $2,600. Excellent work there, John. 
Mike Johnson, target field, target field. Awesome DG closing out there at 1040 at $700 and 67% and profit factor two. Awesome. Looks like he caught some more there, 81% and 322 now. Awesome work, crew. Desk by a few inches on the bottom. It's a work in progress. Oh, yeah. So he's talking about on the 43s. I've noticed this myself, um, which is actually why I switched back to my setup because of the height looking up. Um, if you're going to have the tall 43s, I suggest the lowest desk you can get your hands on that doesn't crush your knees. Basically, I would get a really low desk. Um, and that way you get the full visibility. You can look up and down. But the 43s on a standard size desk that's going to be slightly high again. Um, I've got some lower desks and they're, you know, uh, they're not standard size, but you want to get those as low as possible on the 43s. Um, I did post uh, some information on some adjustable legs. If you are doing those IKEA desks, they are called the Olav, O-L-O-V, adjustable metal legs. And those go very, very low, very, very short. Um, I've got one over here on the right um, that my uh, youngest sits at. And I actually like to sit at that one to, uh, to play some battlefield sometimes. It's very nice. I can pull my monitor way up high, but it also helps my neck and all of my shoulders were, you know, kind of pulled down. You know, it's like we're kind of sitting up like this all the time, but it lets everything kind of come down and stretches me out in my shoulder area. And I actually really like sitting at that lower desk um, just for posture uh, as well. So just a note on that. Uh, those are Olav legs versus Adels, ADILS. Just these are standard if you're talking about from IKEA. Um, the Adels do not have adjustments. The Olavs do. Okay, so that's helpful. Uh, I was talking about, yeah, my current setup. I am probably, you guys can see this, I'm likely going to um, be expanding the center screen, having a larger center screen. I just made a whole lot of adjustments all at the same time, and I regret it later. I gave myself more desk space, which I wanted. I wanted some depth to it, so I pushed the monitors back and away. Um, then I also wanted to kind of bring them in a little bit and change the resolution so that the streams would be a little bit clearer um, <laughs> for you guys. And with all three of those major changes, um, I found what ended up for myself personally is that the clarity at this distance with the smaller screen, and you know, I'm 41 years old now, uh, maybe it's my eyesight not as good as it used to be, but it's not as clear for me when I'm doing certain things. Um, even in my, my gaming is not as enjoyable at this distance at this size. So the center screen you guys will be seeing, I'll be swapping that out for something a little bit larger, which will also allow me to tilt these top screens in slightly at an angle and they can touch at the tips while I give myself some expansion here in the center. I will likely also do a larger 32 in the center and on this left hand side here where I keep a lot of extra stuff like my email um, and the stream information stuff like that over here so that's uh, some some thoughts on the setup and again you know we, even myself I've got to make adjustments you know feel yourself out you need to be comfortable in your space and not just comfortable that's like you can sit down for a short period but something that's gonna be comfortable sitting for long periods and, and the high visibility okay uh, we're talking about that to the DC DMs have his heart says uh, was that Cohen yeah Cohen there so he's got DC DMs, he's got double cross right there, and there is, yep, I see his gold line target right there. Kind of a little bit hard to see in the screenshot there uh, from the size, but yes, uh, excellent work. DC DM money machine, money machine go brr. Awesome. I think Cohen said today was his first day going live. Um, so one conversation around this, again, I know some people zoom in and zoom out while they're taking screenshots, so maybe this isn't how you want to set up, but everybody should recognize that this is far too zoomed in. One of the keys is right there in the delta that you can tell that fin is spread out. That should not look like that. Those need to look like a, a very all connected. Basically, just those should be all connected together. That should get you to the proper zoom level if you can't tell that this is super spread. Okay. Um, it's going to help you in your visibility. All right. Um, Yes, I did talk about um, discovering the Windows Power Tools for Windows 10. Um, if you don't want to pay for Max 2 that we talked about to automatically configure and move your charts around and save, get the Windows Power Tools for Windows 10. Um, can replace that. There are some things missing from it, but you know what? For, for free and included with Windows and one less thing having to run on top of your OS and hopefully fully supported by Microsoft, yes, I would use Power Tools over Max 2 um, at this time. So we'll talk more about that in another video in detail. Uh, took that long on the exit. Excellent there, Manny. He also got that DCDM. Um, <laughs> yes, we're going to be streaming six screens. Cohen, what is this one? Oh, red HMD, very nice. I see the red HMD there. Um, he did not fully enter here. I uh, see so he entered in, he's got multiple entries there, taken on that, getting himself up to 12 contracts, excellent work. Uh, my only critique is pulling your stops in. Folks, this is a no-no, do not do this. I know you're thinking this is a good idea. Everybody thinks it's a good idea. Listen to me, it's not a good idea. It's a very, very bad idea to try to lock your stuff in like this. I would rather you be hovering your finger over the close to close the whole thing if you're gonna make a decision like that. But for you to be able to pull this down and move it back up and things, it's just not a good idea. Don't do it, okay, don't. Um, looks like he's got multiple things. It's not just HMD here. He's got it on multiple time frames. And did he have favorable? Where is MACV? So MACV had been slightly red right there. A little bit tricky. Um, maybe this is why he was pulling his stops down with it, knowing that he's technically going against Long's favorable as well as going against the MACV. But again, very good opportunity set up right there because he's got, you know, he's got PRZ on the uh, uh, MACV. He's got reds over here. He's got it here and here. So again, one of those like you don't have to have everything lined up and, and make a decision to go against. Um, that's a nice, nice trade setup there. Um, second live trade. Okay, so I did see, so on this one, he was Sam. So after he took some trades, now he's going live. Second live trade, got to cover my account first round. Um, excellent work there. Headshot with the Delta on the Mac V. Okay, so got the headshot there. And yeah, I'm... 
Oh, I think he's got him. I think this one's a different account than this one. Okay, so we're showing the entry here. It is here as well. Headshot, um, play there, and he's getting long on the headshot. Does he have Mac V green? Mac V just shifted green, and look at right there. Well planned, well planned. It's coming through. He's on the other side of the Mac V gray area, so we've gone officially green, and even the histogram is starting to turn green as well. And he's got himself a nice juicy headshot. Excellent work, textbook headshot play right there. Um, we got Nick squared with the share X this morning. Not the best morning trade-wise. Happy season members. Let's see how I did here. 1300 yes. We have some of our members complaining about $1,300. Max drawdown, 600 not even half of that. And where's our percent for offer? 74 <laughs> Not sure why he's saying he's complaining. I don't know what you're complaining about. Uh, I would say you should not be complaining. 2.2 profit factor as well. Awesome work there, Colton. Nick says, speaking of green, four, he hit his 4K. Nice. Uh, 4,295.83% profit. Profit factor, 4.81, meaning his winners were almost five times the size of the losers. Excellent work. On that one, and we've got hotkeys configurations. This is a team trying to help out on ShareX. Enzo, what we got here? Double dot with a headshot and king timing. Oh, this is beautiful. I mean, just right there, that's enough to take a trade. But not only did he have that right there set up with the double dot plus pink, you guys see that in there? So we've got a hot one right there, hot pink, and we've got the red for the two. Oops, that R didn't work. Uh, red, there we go. And then he's got the headshot there and a headshot coming in here on the fives and he's inside of a PRZ. Remember something I want to take a note here, just because the green PRZ does not mean we are all looking for greens. Remember we are looking, this is an activity zone that I tell you guys about, okay? If it's inside of a PRZ. Now, if you get a setup that is in the direction of the MACV with that, yes, the color matters, but as long as you get it, if you're getting a setup inside of that, absolutely great, great trade there. Uh, MACV was also red. So again, another reason why um, taking that one. Very nice one, Enzo. Bowman, 100% today. Nice work and a new person with us. 576 bucks, excellent work, hitting his 500 and 100% on those. Well done, Mr. Bowman. All right. Okay, um, I did point out this video here. Everybody needs to go and check this one out, Mental Trading Hack. Uh, if you haven't seen this video, go and look for this one, Mental Trading Hack. I'll put a link down in the description for this one because we're referencing it here in this video. Something I think today really everybody needs to go and take a peek at for planning out your five trades, depending on any session that you're in, whether it's morning, afternoon, um, evening, Lunchtime, doesn't matter. That is extremely, extremely important. And some people, some of the stuff I saw in the room um, would be helpful for you guys to see that as you increase your size through your five trades. Um, I like the look of this one. Probably not with the MACV. Uh, yeah, oh no, you did have it. Okay, he waited until the MACV histogram was green. Very good. The, wow, nice work, Enzo. Textbook, beautiful work. After the green, there is a blue dot on multiple time frames here to also say there could be a nice shift coming in here. And then he's taken the Green dot, double dot, green dot on the lowest time frame, but he's also got the green dot on the eights as well. Fives, uh, only trick there, but he had pierced through the pink. So what does that tell you? Uh, pierce of the pink is also a long, and that is a great trade setup right there. He's also using the PRZ for the target. Look at that PRZ target right there. Excellent work on that one, Enzo. Remo went from minus 1K to plus 1K. Very, very nice. Beast mode, awesome. Uh, yeah, Casey said great kind of trade right there as well. Keeps on going. So that trade kept going all the way through the PRZ. Um, great, great, great play there. Um, okay, I wanted to point out something on this one. I'm from this one from earlier today. So he's talking about that DCDM. Yes, great one right there. He's got the green dot behind it. So we measure from there to there. Boom, gives us the target right there. Excellent work. DCDM, standard, right? Now, everybody always asks, well, when is a double cross going to be a continuation? When is double cross a reversal? Remember, um, if it's out in the open, right, like this, especially with the PRZ target, obviously DCDM, double cross, double move. If... It is a double cross, not out in the open, meaning it is encroached by a PRZ, dot, etc. Be very, very careful. That is likely a reversal. Or if you're looking at it into a very large extension, look at the size of the extension. Okay, size of the extension. This uh, you can't really see from the screenshot, but it looks like it's probably came down pretty good, pretty strong. Okay, I don't want to play a double cross, double move like this on something that's coming into a green PRZ, and we've got large timing right there, not on. Uh, not on the king. So this is actually a great one for two plays off of double crosses. Again, if you want to be a double cross specialist, okay, you can just, if you just were a double cross specialist, you can do quite well on this. It's a double cross around the PRZ. It's that green box right there. So we're looking for a reversal on this. And then this one, double cross, and all you have to do is identify it and then make your decision on which one it is and follow our rules on that. And again, the more that you trade those, the better you will get at them. And of course, don't forget one of our newest features. Now we've got an alert for the double crosses. So as a double cross shows up, you can put an audio alert on that to tell you what instrument and what time frame that's coming in on as well. Okay, give me an A, give me an L. Yeah, I'm a box. That's awesome. Nick is super pumped there. Made 6,600, so he wasn't even done at his 4K. 86% profitable, 6,600 on the day. Nick absolutely crushed it. 
Awesome work. Must be that new chair he got. <laughs> Holy F. Yeah, man, he absolutely crushed it. Now, there was a bunch coming down the tape at the end of the day. If you guys were listening, it was... I mean, you basically could have just hit the button today at the end of the day. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about here in the audio box room right here, click on the E-mini trade floor, come into the audio room, and you can come and listen to the aggressiveness of the tape. It is extremely powerful. Flowmaster audio box, totally OP. Thought I took that PRZ cross. Somebody's excited about PRZ cross. Let's see. What did he take here? PRZ cross... He's talking about this one? Oh, yes. Yes, he is. So, PRZ cross, he took long. Now, he had multiple things going on there. Not just a PRZ cross here, but this is where he says he entered on the PRZ cross. But, he had the cross here. He had, oh, no, it didn't. No, that's, that's previous. So, um, when did he get there? Dumb cross, reversal. He's got the green dot. Okay. Well played there. But I think you've got, you got a J-hook coming in right here. J-hook into PRZ cross. He's in four contracts. That's, he's up $1,500 on this, and he's got a stop back behind the red dot. Now, if you want to do this, we talked about earlier, don't move your stops in and chasing. That's a no-no. This is exactly how you do do it though. Put it behind our setups, put it behind the cross, put it behind the dot. That is how you play it and play it well. Excellent work there, Cohen. Oh, and that's the same person. So critique on the front side, looks like we got it on the back side. Excellent work. One trade to rule them all. Remo, did you crush one? Oh, he had a huge trade, $3,700 on a single trade there. Um, yeah, it looks like he had a little bit of a rough day, um, coming away with 1300 on the day for one that I guess you smashed there at the end of the day. Um, excellent work there, Remo. Did a lot of trade, when I went to trade Sim. Don't forget about FOMC this week. Still in the green. How to do? 200 bucks there. 68% profit. 1.4 profit factor. Awesome stuff. Um, what cost your crash? First day using Algobox. Lots to learn. Loving it already. Says Terry. 400 bucks on brand new person. 50% win rate and profit factor. 21. Okay, so his, his winners are way bigger than his losers on that. And he hit 400 bucks there. I'm not sure if that was micros or e minis. Uh, new to the crew. Well done there, Terry. All right, Colton hit 1600. Final on the day says 76% profitable. Profit factor 1.83. 1600. Excellent work, Colton. Mr. Long Prez, 56% profitable, profit factor 1.6, big time, 300 bucks there for him on the day. Excellent, excellent work. Very, very proud of you guys. All right, so we talked about Father's Day coming up. Don't forget, you know, for our, uh, fathers kind of get a bad rap a lot, right? Uh, the ladies in the house, Mother's Day, everybody makes a big deal about that. I feel like the men kind of get shafted on occasion, don't get enough credit, in my personal opinion. I'm allowed to have my personal opinion, and you guys can say I'm skewed if you want to. I've got three little ones of my own, and we've got one on the way. Super excited about that. So I kind of want to celebrate Father's Day in a big way. I'm very, very... Um, you know, grateful to be a father and just so blessed with these great little ones. And I want to extend some of that to you guys. And you are purchasing um, this week, the entire week, all the way through Father's Day next Sunday. Um, first of all, we're going to get you hooked up with the Black Friday offer. Plus, I'm going to send you one of those 43-inch monitors. Let me see if I can pull one of those up here from our Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out on some fun. Let's see if we've, uh, here we go. Here is that 43-inch monitor. Let's see if I can get that center of the screen there. There's Mikey um, hanging out on that right there. But looks like a beast can fit um, all of your charts. You can get um, all four of our e-mini instruments on a single screen. And again, I usually recommend having one off on the side for Discord or browser. But this will literally allow you to trade four of the e-minis that are our primaries. And yeah, that's... Um, that's what we're going to do. So if you're interested in getting hooked up with us during this awesome week and celebrating some Father's Day with us and coming and joining our crew, I'm going to hook you up with Black Friday Plus, 43-inch monitor. So come on and enjoy that, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mothbot, Curtis, G, and the rest of the gang, I am sitting out that big H-Town. See y'all.